Rafa Nadal has voiced his disappointment that Novak Djokovic would not be able to play in the U.S. Open. Well, what was Rafa's response to Novak's ban? He underlined that it's his rival's choice not to be vaccinated, and so he is solely responsible. Here's all we know about it. Without further ado, let's dive into what Nadal had to say about Novak's ban at the U.S. Open. Rafa Nadal acknowledged his disappointment that Novak Djokovic would not be able to participate in the U.S. Open, but emphasized that it's his rival's choice not to be vaccinated, and therefore Therefore, he is solely to blame. Djokovic confirmed his resignation from the New York Grand Slam on Thursday, admitting that he would not be permitted into the country owing to his vaccination status. Foreign travelers must still present immunization proof to enter the United States. However, there was speculation that the regulations might be modified soon, and Djokovic would be permitted to participate. However, when no such relief arrived in time for Thursday's draw at Flushing Meadows, Djokovic surrendered defeat and declared his retirement. On Friday, while discussing the issue at Flushing Meadows. Nadal gently extended his sympathies to longtime adversary Djokovic. However, just like he did when border authorities stopped Djokovic before the Australian Open in January, Nadal reminded the Serb that his refusal to follow the rules was his option. I've said it before and I'll repeat it. The sport is larger than any person, Nadal remarked. I, without a doubt, missed a lot of important events in my tennis career due to injury. I was not here last year. I wasn't here two years ago. The competition is still ongoing. Tennis continues to thrive. Even even if it's not good news for everyone, the world and tennis will go on after me, after Novak, after Roger. Every year, the slam champion is crowned. That's all. Moving on. More details on Novak's ban at the U.S. Open. Without a question, Novak is one of the most influential players in our sports history during the previous 20 years. I feel bad for him because he cannot go here. However, on the other hand, it was his option. Nadal continued. It's heartbreaking news from my standpoint. It's always a tragedy when the world's finest players cannot compete in a tournament due to injury or other factors. It's difficult for the fans and the tournament. It's also difficult for the players since we want to have the finest field possible. World number one, Daniil Medvedev, who defeated Djokovic in last year's US Open final to deprive the Serb of a calendar year Grand Slam said he wishes Djokovic was in New York. I feel like the competition with Rafa is heating up in a manner. 22 and 21 Grand Slam championships. A joke of a number, he remarked. It's a shame he's not here. It would make an excellent tennis tale. Not only that, but it's not on us tennis players who are breaking the rules. It's the American government. Also completely understandable. Well, what are your thoughts on Rafa's brutal response? Please leave a remark. Following that, Rafa Nadal is sure that he will overcome his injury issues. Rafael Nadal is back at the US Open for the first time in three years, aiming for a fifth win in New York. The 22-time Grand Slam winner elected not to come to America in 2020, and then missed out last year due to a foot injury. He has yet to lose a best-of-five sets match this season. Still, he lacks match experience having only participated once since being pulled out of Wimbledon before the semifinals due to an abdominal rupture. It's a difficult injury because it's harmful and unsafe, he explained. When you have a scar, it reminds you of how hard you worked while serving. It would help if you regained your flexibility. I'm doing everything I can to help. I'm hoping to be prepared for the action. That's all I have to say about it. I aim to be competitive enough to give myself a shot with my current resources. Next up, Nick Kyrgios fumes over marijuana smoke. Early in the match, Kyrgios told the chair umpire that he could smell marijuana in the crowd. When the umpire indicated a stench from the kitchens, he said it was f marijuana. It was only smoke. I'm not going to moan about food. Athletes running side by side with asthma are not ideal. The chair umpire then addressed the crowd, saying, ladies and gentlemen, as a courtesy to the players, please abstain from smoking around the court. Thank you very much. Nick has asked the umpire to caution the audience about smoking because he thinks he can smell someone smoking marijuana, Woodbridge said. Despite the incident, Kyrgios kept calm long enough to beat his French opponent, 7-6, 3-6-4, 4-6, 6 and 6-4. Kyrgios won the match and advanced to the third round by taking the deciding break with a 5-4 lead in the third set. On Friday, he will face American wildcard J.J. Wolf for the first time for a berth in the second week in New York. Following that, Jordan Thompson gets into a fight with his opponent during the U.S. Open. Jordan Thompson of Australia challenged opponent Daniel Elahi Galan in a violent mid-match brawl at the U.S. Open. Thompson and Galan were embroiled in a close struggle in the third set on Wednesday at Flushing Meadows when they engaged in a violent altercation 
at the net. When Galan was ready to serve, Thompson approached the net and said something to his Colombian opponent. Galan then came to Thompson at the net to resume the debate, which was getting heated. According to Channel 9 analyst Todd Woodbridge, the discussion revolved over the length of time Galan took between serves. There's a little bit of aggro, a little bit of friction between the lads. The Australian legend said, I believe it has something to do with Galan's schedule. When he's on the court, Thompson never backs down. The chair umpire then advised both players to remain calm at the change of ends. Fans were taken aback by the odd scenes. Thompson, however, was defeated in a five-set struggle, falling 3-6, 6-2, 6-3, 4-6, and 3-6. Moving on, Alex de Menor already demonstrated his ruthlessness by exacting cold-blooded retribution and advancing to the third round in New York. On Wednesday, de Menor defeated Chilean Christian Guerin 6-3, 6-0, 4-6, and 6-2 to advance to the last 32 at Flushing Meadows for the fourth match in five trips. Garen survived a match point and rallied from two sets to love down to defeat De Menor in the fourth round of Wimbledon earlier this year. And the Australian number one wasn't about to forget. That devastating defeat at the All England Club was one of the most heartbreaking of De Menor's career, and the 18th seed easily revealed this week that he was looking for vengeance in New York. De Menor was determined to set the record straight from the start of the rematch on Wednesday. From 3-3 three three in the first set, the Australian tightened the screws to reel off nine games in a row to seize control of the contest. He had to react fast after dropping four straight games to relinquish the third set, but it added to his satisfaction as he exercised the ghost of Wimbledon with a tenacious fourth set. I'm pleased with my performance, but I'm more comfortable with how I felt mentally. That was significant for me heading into the match, as well as how I handled the circumstances, explained Demonor. Finally, Andy Murray advances to the third round. Andy Murray escaped an early scare to beat American wildcard Emilio Nava. 5-7, 6-3, 6-1, and 6-0, advancing to the third round of a major slam for the second time in five years. Nava, the world number 203 who had knocked out Australian John Millman in the previous round, demonstrated on Wednesday that he belonged further up the ladder with his assured shot making, winning the crucial points to capture the first set in 84 minutes. Murray battled with his first serve 10 years after winning his first Grand Slam at Flushing Meadows, but always willing to work in hits, broke the inexperienced Nava twice in the second set to square the match after the American made numerous unforced errors. That fueled the former world number one as he unexpectedly regained his range on serve, ripping through the third set while Nava struggled to maintain his levels from the opener and began to wane, giving the tenacious Scott the lead. Murray was ruthless with two early breaks to go 4-0 up with Nava on the ropes. Nava came close in the sixth game, but Murray, 35, held tight to break again before serving the set. Physically, I'm in the most incredible shape I've been in years. I'm getting close to my destination. I'm hoping to make a deep run here. Murray, who was playing with a prosthetic hip, stated, Murray will next face 13th seed Matteo Berrettini, who overcame Hugo Grenier 2-6, 6-1, 7-6, and 7-6 last year. Well, that marks the end of our video for today. We hope you enjoyed it. On your way out, make sure to hit that subscribe button, and thanks for watching.